hi guys welcome back again this video will be on design of footings so before we start off with the design we will see the basic criteria and uh, the overview of footings so as we all know the footing is the most important part of the entire structure because all of the loads imposed loads all the dynamic loads has to be transferred through the footing into the soil so before designing the footing we have to take care of uh, all the details and all the requirements before we start the design so not much is given in the IS code about footings but um, if you want to see uh, all the criteria and all the requirements for uh, footings you can check the IS code it is given in clause number 34.1 on page number 63 so first we will see the geometric requirements of the footing so in clause number 34.1.2 it says that the depth of the footing shall not be less than 150 mm when the footing is resting on the soil and if you are providing the footing on a group of piles then it should not be less than 300 mm so that's with the geometric uh, sorry the depth of the footing the maximum and the, uh, sorry, the minimum depth of the footing and uh, and it also says that uh, in case of a plane pedestal like what I have drawn here the angle between the plane passing through the bottom edge of the pedestal and the corresponding junction of the column with the pedestal and the horizontal plane I will show you that what it is so this is the plane the angle of that plane which is given as alpha should be so it should be greater than now let us see the forces that are acting on the footing the first force is the moment we can directly say that it is a bending moment it is given in clause number 34.2.3 it says that uh, the bending moment at any section shall be determined by passing by passing through the section a vertical plane which extends completely across the footing and computing the moment of forces acting over the entire area of the footing on one side of the set plane okay so let's see what is the plane here which we are, which we are talking about so this is the plane So this is the section and this is the plan of the footing and the force which is acting on this uh, plane is the uplift force of the soil which is given in W clear newton per meter square here. After the bending moment there is shear and uh, it is given in clause number 34.2.4. We will see two way shear first and um, in two way shear the critical section or the critical plane of the uh, failure is at a distance d by 2 from the face of the column and it is on all the faces so this is the critical plane and it is at a distance of d by 2 from the face of the column this is the column this is the column face and it is at a distance of d by 2 where d is the effective depth of the footing this is the plan and this is the uh, cross section and again in this step in the cross section this is the critical plane so what we have to do is we have to check the uh, shear force uh, that is caused by the reaction from the soil so which is w into area of the shaded portion okay so area of shaded portion will be of this area multiplied by the uplift force that is the shear that is causing the failure that is causing the two way shear failure and the shear resisted by concrete will be ks tau c multiplied by the area of critical plane now let us see what is the area of critical plane so I'll show you in a 3D 
suppose this was the footing and under the two-way shear failure this was the area under two-way shear failure so the shear plane is this plane which is on all the four sides so the shear force uh, resisted by concrete will be ks tau c multiplied by area of critical plane now i'll show you what is ks so the ks value is it is given in clause number 31.6.3.1 it is ks is equal to 0 0.5 plus short side of the column upon the longer side it should be <coughs> less than 1 if it is greater than 1 you have to take it as 1 so all in all the shear force resisted by the concrete should always be greater than the shear the shear force that is causing the failure so that's all with the two way shear and one way shear is also similar to this we'll just see what is it what what, uh, what are the changes in one way shear now the last thing is one way shear it is also given in clause number 34.2.4 and uh, it is almost similar to two way shear but in this case the area of uh, critical plane and the critical plane itself changes and uh, which is at a distance d from the face of the column where again d is the effective depth of the footing so this is the face of the column and this is the critical plane and it is at a distance of d from the face of the column this is the plan and in the section it will look like this again here this is the d and this is the critical plane so like we did in two way shear the shear force causing failure would be w multiplied by area of shaded portion which is this part and shear resisted by concrete will be ks multiplied by tau c and uh, which is multiplied by area of critical plane so I already explained you what is the area of critical plane in the previous case. So it will be similar for this also. And um, we have to check that the shear resisted by the concrete is always greater than the shear force causing the failure. So that's all with the checks for uh, design of footing. And there are again two checks, which is uh, the development led check and the check for load transfer. So which is almost similar for what we did in slabs. We will also go through that in the actual design problem which will be in the another video and um, that's all with the overview and um, please watch the next video which is um, on a solved problem of a rectangular footing okay thanks for watching